my name is Evan Bailey. We're here with Team Kate. It's a part of Dr. Strange's EDM 310 class. Our next production is going to be a project for SmartBoard, how to use SmartBoard. And these are my teammates. Hi, I'm Ashley Madozzi. Katie Fenton. And once again, Terrell Steele. Hi class, today we're going to talk about the reconstruction. And the Reconstruction is the period following the Civil War in which Congress passed laws designed to help rebuild the country and bring the Southern States back into the Union. Now you can see here that we have a map and the gray areas on the map are the Southern States and you can click on each one to reveal the name. Like you can see Arkansas here. Now during this time there was actually an amendment passed and black people or African Americans were given freedom. So even though African Americans had been given their freedom, they were still faced with many problems. Millions of free slaves needed housing, education, clothing, food, and jobs. And here's a picture. And we also have a clip that you can go to and watch that we'll watch later on. Okay, now we're going to talk about women in the reconstruction. And here are also two pictures you can look at. And during the reconstruction era, leading figures in the movement unsuccessfully demanded women's suffrage be included in the 15th Amendment, which granted the vote to African American men. This position led to a split within the suffrage movement in 1867, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Sojourner Truth, and Susan B. Anthony opposed the Reconstruction Amendments because they excluded women in their rights. Also, others within the movement, including Lucy Stone and the abolitionist Frederick Douglass, believed that women's suffrage could wait until African Americans had won the civil, had won civil and voting rights. Now we're going to talk about Jim Crow laws. And as you can see, Jim Crow was a character that was made up and he degraded the image of African Americans. And it took an emotional toll on African Americans and how they were displayed in the public. Good afternoon. Today we're going to talk about the political effects of the Reconstruction. And during the Reconstruction, the Amendment of the United States Constitution was ratified in 1870, which gave African Americans the right to vote and hold public office. And then in 1870, Hiram Revels became the first African American elected as the U United States Congress serving as a Mississippi Senator. And that's Hiram right here. And two other important amendments were the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, and the 14th Amendment that said anyone born in the United States was going to be um, considered a U.S. citizen. So after the Reconstruction, the rights to vote for African Americans were lost when the Jim Crow laws were passed by the Southern states. And the Jim Crow laws legally established segregation and reinforced prejudices held by whites. And who was Jim Crow? Jim Crow was, um, he was actually a fiction, fictionist character from a play made in the 1830s. And the play made fun of the African Americans, so Jim Crow became kind of a character in a term used to um, make fun of the African Americans. And then down here in the corner, we have a clip. All you have to do is just press that, and it'll lead us to um, a YouTube video telling us about more telling us more about the Jim Crow laws. And the effects of the Jim Crow laws on the lives of the African Americans and American Indians were devastating. And if we click here on the arrows, it'll tell us unfair poll taxes and voting tests were established to keep African American men from voting. African Americans were forced to use separate poor quality facilities and services such as drinking fountains, restrooms, and restaurants. African Americans found it very difficult to vote or hold public office. And African American and white children attended separate schools. 
and Jim Crow laws also affected American Indians. Okay, so Ashley talked a little bit about the effects on African Americans and Native Americans and uh, women during uh, Reconstruction. Kate talked a little bit about uh, political ramifications. And so I want to talk a little bit about uh, economic problems. Uh, question being, what economic problems did Southerners face during Reconstruction? The reason why we say Southerners is mainly because uh, the North uh, was relatively unaffected. I don't want to say they were fully unaffected, but uh, with industrialization and those kinds of things, uh, Reconstruction and, and post-Civil War era really hit the South hard. First of all, we, we've got here, economic, America's economy was in ruins, and what you had, especially in the South, was uh, during the war, the Confederate states uh, made their own money, printed their own money. They were actually a Confederate Union, so they were their own uh, entity. So they actually, uh, depends on what perspective you look at it, but they made their own money. But after the war was over, uh, their money ended up having no value at all because uh, the Confederate states rejoined the Union. Um, so monetary value uh, in, in the uh, paper money they produced was non-existent after the war. Um, especially in Georgia and those kind of regions where you had Sherman marching through to Atlanta, a lot of railroads, bridges, plantations, crops were all destroyed. Um, and so what you had was, is you had this period of time where people had to go back and rebuild everything. So uh, it, was, it was a start over process. Very tough times economically for Southern uh, inhabitants. Um, after the war, uh, African Americans were, were freed. And so you had this vast influx of population that needed jobs, needed work. And in the South, uh, one of the few opportunities people had was, was to become a sharecropper. So people turned to sharecropping to help improve their situations, which relatively, I mean, it really didn't help improve a whole lot, but it was a way of making money. Uh, sharecropping was a system uh, common in the South after the war in which freedmen and poor white farmers rented land from land owner, owners by promising to pay the owners with a share of the crops. So they plowed the fields, grew the crops, and instead of uh, making money off of those crops, they gave a percentage of their crops to the landowner so that they could continue to work and feed their family off of that land. And a lot of those people that were sharecroppers included uh, freed slaves, freed African American slaves, as well as uh, poor, poor white people in the South. Um, so we have a little interactive thing here. You can click here. This particular farmer is growing, what's he growing? Growing tobacco, big crop in the South. This particular farmer, growing corn. Corn's a staple crop of the South. We do a lot of things with corn. Uh, this particular farmer is growing cotton, also known as white gold in the South. Um, after the war was over, there were no more slaves. Somebody had to take charge of growing crops, and so sharecroppers took the burden. And so it says right here, we can move this little guy over. He's going to plow that field. He's going to plow that field. He's going to uh, bring in the crops there. And these sharecroppers paid money to the landowner. So there goes the money to the landowner. There goes, uh, I'm sorry, not money, but uh, crops. But that's basically where all their money went was to the landowner, their money being in the form of crops. So it's kind of interesting. This here says, now that I don't have slaves, what's going, who's going to work my fields? So the answer to that would obviously be sharecroppers. Next slide. Um, as Reconstruction progressed, um, industry started to slowly come back. The need for, for more and better roads increased, especially in the south. So um, that was another big part of the government influxing money to, uh, to recover the economy. Um, tobacco farming and the manufacturing of tobacco products uh, became very important to southern industry, especially in Virginia, places like that. Other crops included, like we was talking about before, included uh, uh, cotton as well as corn. Uh, corn was important for the production of uh, various things, whiskey production, um, um, various 
cornmeal, that kind of thing for cooking, uh, as well as cotton for the textile industries. So these are just a few things that uh, help to recover the economic situation of the South after the Civil War during the Reconstruction era. Hey guys, it's Terrell here again, and I'm just going to be speaking about Reconstruction, or actually what I'm going to be talking about in this specific slide is the Jim Crow laws and the effects that it had on African Americans, and a little bit about Indians. To get started, the Jim Crow laws were brought about, and they created unfair poll taxes and voting tests to keep African American men from voting. Another thing that they did, African Americans were forced to use separate, more poor quality facilities and services such as drinking fountains, restrooms and restaurants, and even rail, railroad cars or trains. And a great example of that is in Plessy versus Ferguson, when Homer Plessy attempted to ride a whites only car and was asked to move, and when he refused to, he was arrested. To carry on, African Americans found it very difficult to vote or hold public office, which if you're discouraged from voting, which at that point in time was mainly white land-owning males. And if you're discouraged to vote, it's very hard for you to get a chance of holding a public office position. Another thing is African Americans and white children went to separate schools, in which some cases you had very low quality schools where the floors and everything were just poor quality where the African Americans went to school. And then on the other side, you had your white American schools where they were nicer Oxford type universities. The effects really didn't reach the Indians as so much as it did the African Americans, because after all, the Civil War was believed to be fought over slavery. 